Hello guys, my name is Edward. I'm a businessman doing well for myself, but something happened. Stay tuned and listen to my story about how my mistake cost me becoming a father and a husband to a total stranger. One night, I went to my friend Uche's birthday party. We were all having fun playing an interesting game called Truth or Dare. Everyone was participating except for one lady. When it got to Uche's turn, he dared me to get married to any girl I chose there and then. I was surprised, but I had to do it. I went around to see who to choose, and then I came across this lady and stopped by her. I was told her name is Cassandra. Immediately, I stood up to propose to her. Honestly, that wasn't me. I was so drunk I didn't even know what I was doing. The following morning, we woke up and were surprised to find ourselves naked on the same bed. I was dumbfounded as I had a flashback of the event and felt so disappointed. I went out of the room to confront Uche, staring at him. He asked me why I was staring at him like that. I told him, you know this is all your fault. I know you don't like my fiance, but she is engaged to me and you need to start respecting that. He was confused at first. Then I asked, who is that girl? He replied that her name is Cassandra and she is his friend. Did you know she was a virgin? I asked, and he said he believed so because her mom is a deaconess. Hearing this, I felt terrible, deflowering an innocent girl all in the name of one useless game we played. I didn't even know what to do. I just left. Later, I drove home. Upon getting home, my fiance Rita was standing at the doorpost. I was surprised because I wasn't expecting her. Oh, Rita, you are here? I missed your calls, I said. Then she said 54 times. Ah, that's a lot, I said. Then she insisted I start talking. I was lost here as I didn't know what to say. Rita is really dramatic. Little things trigger her. I did my best and started making up stories. Babe, the truth is I was inside since last night. I mean, I just had to step out this morning because I had an important job to attend to, I said, not knowing she was in my house since last night, waiting for me to come back. She had already caught me, so I just had to tell her the truth. I went for my friend's birthday party. Guys, guess what? Before I could say another word, Rita had already landed a very hot slap on my cheek, and that really upset me. She was unapologetic about what she did. I didn't want to lay my hands on her, so I carried her inside as we kept on exchanging words. Later, I went to my wardrobe and opened it, but I couldn't find any of my clothes. I was surprised and went to Rita. Rita, where are my clothes? I asked. She then said she washed them. Like for real, you washed my clothes? I asked, looking surprised. Besides... My clothes were not even dirty. She told me to check the bathroom. Guys, why are some ladies like this? They are just there to frustrate your life. That same night, I was sitting alone in my house when Rita came down screaming my name, asking me what I was doing there at that time of the night. She started saying all sorts of nonsense that I didn't even understand. We got into an argument and she carried a glass, threatening to break my head if I didn't speak. Guys, sincerely, I didn't know I got engaged to a lady I can't even handle or give simple instructions to, and I can't leave her because of the love I have for her. Anyway guys, that's not the end of my story. The next day, my sister came to my house complaining about my fiancé who no one seems to like because she is too toxic. I made it clear to her that I am the one getting married to her, not her, and I love her the way she is. Then I went outside and saw a package. I looked inside and saw flowers and was so surprised. Who could have dropped this here? Then I read one of the notes and realized it was from Rita. Turning back, I saw her. She apologized and we moved on. The next day, my friend came around telling me about Cassandra. He said he thinks we should go visit her. But I said, no, and besides, I don't want to talk about this anymore. He then suggested, what if she's pregnant? Leaving me shocked. I had to shake it off believing she couldn't be pregnant as we continued our drinks. The next morning, I had a knock on my door and I went to open it. I saw Uche and Cassandra. Immediately, she told me she was pregnant with my child. I was shocked. Wait, what? What do you mean you are pregnant? At that moment, I was so confused. How did I even allow this kind of mistake to happen? Then I asked, so what do we do now? She didn't know what to do, so I asked her to consider abortion. She said she wasn't in support of abortion. Honestly, I really didn't know what to do. Since she said she wasn't in support of abortion, what did she want me to do? I was also confused. 
Talking to my friend only added to my problem. He could be so annoying, always coming up with ideas that don't suit my situation. Later that night, my fiance called saying she saw me in her dream carrying a crying baby. Wait, is that why you called me? Why don't you go and do a pregnancy test and see if you are pregnant? I warned her. Look, let this be the last time you call me and try to raise drama over some stupid dream or something. Did you hear me? Honestly, guys, I don't know if this fiancé of mine is a witch or something. She sees all my life in her dreams. Is she monitoring me or something? I was surprised as she kept yelling on the phone, so I just had to end the call. The following night, while I was asleep with my fiancé, Rita, my phone rang, and it was Cassandra. I quickly and quietly left the room to take the call. Look, why are you calling at this time? I have told you I have a fiancé, and you can't keep calling however you like. She then told me her mom wanted to throw her out of the house if she didn't bring the guy who got her pregnant. Honestly, guys, this is a serious dilemma for me. I'm just so confused. I begged her to remain calm and give me some time as I ended the call. The next morning, I had a knock on my door. When I opened it, I saw Cassandra, who was already at my house with her luggage. Shocked, I asked, what are you doing here? She said her mom had sent her packing and she didn't have anywhere to go except my house, leaving me helpless. Just then, Rita came out and saw her and began asking who she was. I tried to cover up telling her she was my distant cousin and she just smiled. I won't lie, guys, I sometimes fear Rita because she's unpredictable. I was shaking as she kept interrogating Cassandra. Then she offered to take her to the guest room herself, even when I insisted otherwise. She refused, leaving me even more scared. Later that night, we were about to eat when my fiancé asked me, Why is your cousin not coming out for dinner? I said, I will just take the food to her. But my fiancé insisted she take the food to her herself. As soon as she left, I quickly took my phone to call my friend Uche. Hello, guy, I said. Um, I have both Rita and Cassandra under the same roof with me, like it's a ticking time bomb, bro. I don't know what to do. I'm thinking maybe Cassandra can stay with you at your house. But he said no, it's not possible, adding that if he were in my shoes, he would confess to Rita. I had to end the call because Rita was already coming back. She told me Cassandra had locked herself in the room and refused to answer anyone. Later that night, I couldn't sleep, so I went to check on Cassandra. She opened the door for me. I brought her food, but she refused to eat. She had been crying all day, so I asked if we could talk. Still crying, she then spoke up, questioning how she got into this mess. This wasn't what she pictured for herself after keeping herself celibate for all these years. Now her mother had thrown her out of the house, calling her a disgrace and a big disappointment. I felt so sorry for her because I could feel the pain she was going through. I consoled her and reminded her she is not a mistake. The next morning, I was in the kitchen preparing breakfast when Cassandra walked in and asked, Are you the one making breakfast? Yes, I replied. My fiancé had to leave early this morning for work. Then she told me she had been up all night thinking if she was really ready to be a mother and realized she wasn't. She didn't have a job and her mother wouldn't allow her to get one, thinking she would get exposed to the world. Her mother wanted her to marry a pastor who was old enough to be her father and do the Lord's work. So with all of this, she had decided to go for an abortion. Her friend had helped book an appointment with the doctor, leaving me surprised. I asked her if she was sure sh she wanted to go for the abortion. She said she had thought it over and that's what she wanted. I was speechless and worried as she left. Later, I went to Uchi and told him about Cassandra's sudden decision. She had decided to go for the abortion, but guys, I don't know why I was not happy about it. Yes, that's what I want, but I don't know. I'm just so confused. I guess maybe I need time to think it through, but I, I know she also wants the best for herself. What do I do now? I thought to myself, as Uche also told me to do what pleases her. The following day, I was in the living room, worried and thinking about what to do when Cassandra came out. Quickly, I asked her if she was going to the hospital. She said yes. Panicking, I pleaded with her not to go because I'm not sure if I want her to get rid of the child, but she insisted she was going to do it, stating she's doing it for me, my fiancé, and herself. Then I told her I want the baby and asked her to give me one week to think about it. I kept pleading with her before she finally accepted. 
The next day, my sister came around looking so excited and asked about my wife. Guys, can you imagine? I was really surprised, asking her if she didn't understand what I said to her over the phone. But she was too excited to listen to anything I had to say and quickly rushed inside to check on Cassandra. The next morning, I prepared a lot of dishes for Cassandra. When she came down, she was so surprised to see a lot of dishes on the table. I told her I really felt bad about how she lost her virginity and we both ate together. The next day, Cassandra and I were, were both in the living room watching some funny movies and we kept laughing. My fiancé came back, saw us laughing, watched without saying a word, and then went upstairs. I quickly went after her. The following day, I came back from work and began perceiving something delicious. I asked, what is this appetizing aroma that is troubling my stomach? I asked with a smile on my face. Immediately, Cassandra emerged from the kitchen and welcomed me, so I handed her the gift I got for her. She was surprised and happy as she thanked me before returning to the kitchen. Just like that, guys, Cassandra and I were now getting along pretty well, like we've known each other for a long time. We spent time together laughing, sharing jokes, and watching funny videos. We also played games together. Honestly, if you ask me how this sudden bond between us came about, I wouldn't be able to answer that. I just know I allowed it, and it just happened. This even bothered my fiancé, making her ask when Cassandra would leave the house. I told her clearly that Cassandra wasn't leaving. Guys, with this confidence, I feel like I'm beginning to like Cassandra a lot. The next morning, I went to the kitchen and saw Cassandra cleaning up the dishes. You know you don't have to do all this, right? I said. She replied that she was just doing what needed to be done. Or perhaps your wifely duties? I said, smiling. Then I told her, you know you're not going through with the abortion anymore, right? She said she didn't have the capacity to take care of a child. So I said, but I want to be your support, leaving her surprised. Then I moved closer and asked, wait, what if we are truly supposed to be Mr. and Mrs.? She thought about it for a while and replied, so what about your fiancé? I paused, realizing I had totally forgotten about her for a second, and I was speechless. Then Cassandra said she was going to the hospital to do the needful tomorrow. I felt helpless. I went back to my room to talk to my friend. Hello, Uche. She is going to the doctor to get rid of the baby. I really do not want her to get rid of the baby. How, how do I stop her? I asked. He told me exactly what to do, and I thanked him. The next morning, she was about to go out when she found the door locked. She started screaming my name to come and open the door. I was outside, but didn't open it because I didn't want her to go to the hospital. She kept banging on the door, demanding it to be opened. Seeing she wasn't ready to stop banging anytime soon, I decided to speak up so she'd know I was around. I said, it's just a few days since you have been in my house and I am beginning to see what others see. I now see that I can have a peaceful relationship, no arguments, no fighting, and no drama. I have been in a toxic relationship, he you know, but love didn't let me see that. The worst part is that I have even taken steps to spend the rest of my life with her. Honestly, Cassandra, I really do not know how you see me, but what I know is that I feel something very different and special for you. Yes, I know pregnancy brought us together, but it has also made me realize that you are someone to be kept. As for my fiance, I made it known to her that I will be ending things with her. She's so toxic and my eyes are clearer now. She then told me to open the door. No, only if you promise you won't go to the hospital again, I said. Unfortunately, she had already missed her appointment, so I asked her out on a date with me. At first, she didn't reply. Then I told her if she didn't reply, I wouldn't open the door. Guys, guess what? She finally accepted to go on a date with me, and I quickly rushed to open the door with so much excitement. The next day, we both went out, and she was so happy about it because it was her first proper date, and she enjoyed it. While we were about to kiss in the car, my fiancé knocked on the window. I was so shocked as I asked Cassandra to stay in the car. Then I got out to meet my fiancé. She asked how two distant cousins had turned into kissing cousins, laughing. Rita, I was going to tell you, she is not my cousin. That girl right there is carrying my child. She exclaimed, wow, I continued, and I really want to take things seriously with her. So at this point, we need to end this relationship. Guys, to my biggest surprise, she didn't even get mad or react. She kept laughing. 
You know why I said I sometimes fear this lady? She's just unpredictable. She won't give you what you expect, but what you don't. She just laughed and told me it's fine. We grew apart, that's the case, and she wished me a happy life as she hugged me warmly and went upstairs, leaving me shocked and even scared. Cassandra came feeling worried and scared, but I quickly calmed her down, assuring her that if anything came up, I would protect her. Cassandra felt bad that Rita was leaving. Just then, Rita came out with her luggage. I offered to help, but she refused and wished us well one last time before leaving. Hmm, her reaction is really scary, honestly. I think we should be worried, I said to Cassandra as I went to close the gate, and then we both went back inside. The following day, I went out. Unknowingly to me, my fiancé had already paid some boys to beat me up. When I came home, Cassandra was shocked and exclaimed, Jesus, what happened to you? Rita sent some boys to beat me up, I said, groaning in pain as she helped me upstairs to freshen up. A few days later, I planned to propose to Cassandra. As she came down the stairs, I dropped the bead we first used to get married from that game. She picked it up, and when she turned, I was already on my knees with the engagement ring. Will you marry me? I asked, and she said yes. I was so happy as we hugged each other. So guys, what did you learn from my story? Leave your thoughts in the comments section. As for me, parents should try as much as possible to make their children understand life even when instilling discipline in them. With that, they won't have to learn the hard way. Also, if you are in any toxic relationship, the earlier you free yourself, the better, or else you are planning to die untimely. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe to this channel for more interesting and latest Nigerian movie updates. See you next time.